Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, welcome to the fifth edition of UIC's Global Rail Freight Conference, shaping together the business of the future. We can applaud. Dear colleagues, dear friends, it's really an immense pleasure for me to address to you this afternoon in order to open this fifth edition of the UIC Global Rail Freight Conference. We'll highlight latest developments of world trade with the perspectives of optimally integrating rail freight into the global transport and logistic chain. The motto of this conference, you remember, is shaping the business of the future. And welcome, of course, to Rotterdam, the city, like Paul said, the city with the largest port in Europe, uh, and which means that the port is capable of receiving the largest sh ships, and it has also good inland connections all over Europe. If you don't share data, if you don't harmonize procedures, if you don't cooperate, you have a beautiful train, but it doesn't work if you want to transport. And more importantly for you as uh, participants at this conference, uh, freight trains run 80% uh, uh, on time. And this is also on a three minute basis, because in our view we have to uh, operate very precisely to offer a reliable uh, line haul into Europe. Rotterdam is the first and often the last port of call in Europe for many shipping lines. Our global freight conferences of the UIC have become a good tradition. And it is quite clear that today no railway company can be successful on its own in international uh, freight transportation. Shaping the business of the future is crucial to boost international rail freight. The 10T policy aims to close the gaps between member state transport networks and overcome technical barriers such as incompatible standards for railway traffic. I think we should don't forget about our uh, key player, our customer. If you want these corridors to be fruitful developments, engage the regions along the corridor in taking part in it. What does rail freight represent to you? The present, the past, or the future. 72.7% .7 for the future. And still there's 18.2% that voted for the past. Why do we have in Europe mostly manual coupling of wagons? My wife has a little twingle. And if the door is not properly locked, there is a light in the dashboard. Wouldn't it be possible to have something on the European freight railways that if some wagon is not properly coupled, you would have a little light there saying there's a problem here? I will always ask you to stand up. So hands in the air! Hands in the air! Congratulations! So now you can see all your neighbors and find common interests to help and uh, find in finding the common interest for the global uh, logistics chain. So dear colleagues, dear friends, I think we are now, after these two days, more friends than colleagues. All good things must come to an end. And I think you will share with me that we had very rich presentations and debates. I think it was high-level panels and uh, all the profession was re represented and I think that uh, what is interesting now for the future of freight is crossing the point of views and for this point, uh, from, from this matter it was perfect. I think that's what I learned the most, what's coming and how to take innovation and new practices into the industry in the next 10-15 years. I found that the conference was fantastic in terms of the uh, networking opportunities that were available, the people that were here, uh, the quality of the presentations and the value of the information and learning about the European market. The cooperation and innovation is important for the industry and I think many ideas have been exchanged on how to improve the business into the future and make uh, rail freight the backbone of sustainable mobility. Very informative.